Retraumatization is something that might occur when the memories of a previous traumatic event flood into your present day awareness, which then can lead to an increase in the symptoms that were first created by the trauma. For example, a chronic anxiety, large stress responses, flashbacks, and so on. The retraumatization caused by flooding of past traumatic memories can also create new symptoms that were never there before or enlarge symptoms that were previously less noticeable. And as to why this flooding occurs, we'll cover that very soon as well as what to do. And this flooding can occur quite quickly and almost at any time whenever the traumatic memories get triggered or activated, and we'll talk soon about what to do about it. The type of flooding that can lead to re-traumatization occurs when, instead of simply remembering a past event that was traumatic in nature, we instead relive that event. Practically speaking, what this means is that instead of remembering, where we're just recalling what happened and when it happened and who was there and so on, instead we feel as though we are reliving the event. So that the original emotions, the original physical sensations, the original stress response and so on, they're all felt in the present day as if the trauma is still happening right now and is not just some distant historic event. But why does this happen? I can recall some birthday party from my childhood or a moderately stressful class presentation that I had to give and I can do that without being flooded by the imagery, the smells, the scents and so on from that memory. I can go on recalling without reliving. I can remember while still knowing that I'm in the present, that I'm safe now, that the past is the past. So what is special about traumatic memories that causes us to become disconnected from what we logically know is a safe present day and instead puts us into a physiological and emotional state filled with fear, anger, anxiety and stress? as if our body has prepared us to survive the unsafe past. So what makes traumatic memories unique is what I've mentioned before, that these are memories that are relived rather than simply recalled and remembered. And the reason that they are relived is because the component parts of the memory, for example, what you saw, what you felt and what you heard during the event, these component pieces and the memory overall are totally charged up with emotion and stress energy. And because there's all of this stress and emotional energy tied into these component pieces and the memory, the memory can't be properly processed by our mind and instead it kind of just gets stuck there. Meaning that anytime we recall this information, we feel that information in the exact same way that we did during the initial event. This means that when we recall this trauma, we don't remember that, oh, I felt scared. No. Instead, we actually feel scared. We don't recall, I remember that I was being pushed. Instead, we actively feel the sensation of being pushed. And this is true for all the information, the sensations, the images, the thoughts, the beliefs, the emotions, and so on. Our mind wants to process all of these events and save the useful information and discard the rest. Our brain wants to turn even traumatic events into simple memories. But in order to do that, the emotions that are tied to those memories need to be processed. They need to be at a level where our brain can handle them. And when those emotions are too large, it blocks this automatic processing. So one of the goals of trauma therapy is to convert these reliving memories into standard recall memories. And you do that by reducing the emotional charge of the memory. And then in doing that, the memories and all their component pieces will no longer impact you in the present day. Once the emotions and the stress related to the memory has been processed, it will no longer be possible for it to flood your present consciousness. And the negative impacts that came from that memory will be resolved as well. So as you're kind of processing traumatic memories and working through those, not only do you see the negative impacts of the traumatic memory, like the stress and the emotions and the negative self-beliefs and self-talk, not only do you see that become less as you process the trauma, at the exact same time, you see all of these positive memories that were kind of blocked or forgotten, they'll spontaneously kind of come out and more positive self-talk and more positive beliefs and more positive emotions will spontaneously kind of come up at the same time as the negative beliefs and negative emotions and negative memories get processed. So it's a really, really cool process that happens at the exact same time. The most common context we hear about re-traumatization and flooding is in relation to perhaps poorly executed trauma therapy. Although I will note that not all flooding leads to re-traumatization, nor is all flooding necessarily bad. In some parts of specific trauma therapies, flooding is expected and prepared for in a way that ensures that it does not lead to re-traumatization. The reason flooding may occur during therapy or even in everyday life, and then it may lead to re-traumatization, is that part of trauma therapy is accessing these old state-specific memories and working on processing them, changing them from state-specific into a normal memory, a normal memory that doesn't carry with it all of the emotional and stress baggage from the event. 
the therapy work is to change it from a memory that we relive into a memory that we can just choose to just remember. And it becomes a memory that doesn't carry all of the negative beliefs about ourselves or the overwhelming emotions and sensations with it. But in accessing these traumatic memories to work with them, if not done carefully and properly, there's a risk of diving too deeply into the memories too quickly. And if this is done without proper preparation beforehand, that's when flooding occurs and can lead to re-traumatization. Healing from trauma requires a careful approach where the memory is worked through in a safe way. If you think of traumatic memory as just a big ball that contains within it all of the felt stress, the overwhelming emotions, the negative judgments about ourselves and other people, all of those things, they're just in this big ball. If we dive headfirst into the ball without adequate preparation, we're gonna drown. Trauma has to be worked through in a gradual way gradually introducing the traumatic events in manageable doses. By doing that, you avoid overwhelming, you avoid uncontrolled flooding, you allow for the processing of the trauma without becoming re-traumatized. There are some therapeutic approaches that do this in a very slow, gradual and controlled way, such as somatic experiencing, or there are those therapy approaches that do it in a little bit more of an expedited, but still very controlled and prepared for manner, like EMDR or prolonged exposure therapy. The keys to successful work, though, will always be present, regardless of the type of therapy. There has to be a felt sense of present safety. The work must be prepared for, and there have to be skills learned and ready to use to maintain that felt safety and to prevent re-traumatization. So since I kept talking about skills to feel safe, I'll quickly touch on grounding, orienting, and present safety. Grounding techniques, like focusing on your breath or the present moment, can help you stay connected to the here and now. Orienting techniques involve engaging your senses to become aware of your surroundings, which can ease distress. For example, what can you see? What can you hear? Who's nearby? By combining multiple methods from grounding and orienting toolkits, you make sure that you remain in the present moment, you feel safe, you tend to prevent flooding, but also if flooding does occur, you prevent that flooding from turning into re-traumatization. Related to all of this are psychological defenses. Here's a really simple model that I like, and it illustrates how our defenses keep us safe from flooding, but our defenses also prevent us from processing trauma. So imagine that this circle here is our conscious awareness. It's what we're aware of, our thoughts, currently what we're perceiving, our current sense data, all of that, what we're hearing, on and on and on. Then this ball over here is the ball of our traumatic memories. So inside of this is everything that at the time of our trauma, everything that we were feeling, everything we were thinking, everything we were smelling, everything we were tasting, so on and so on. It's all the things from our traumatic memory. Now let's say we're going about our life, everyday life, and then something happens. We see something or hear something or think of something that triggers a reminder that this trauma is here, it awakens this memory, and then this memory wants to begin leaking out and flooding into our conscious awareness and overtaking our present consciousness. That's the process of flooding. So what do our psychological defenses do? Our psychological defenses put up a wall, and when the flooding begins to happen, well, the wall will mostly block it. Occasionally, maybe a trickle gets through and we still experience some of it, but the defenses will prevent the flooding. Here's where the problems come in, though. Not all of our defenses are super healthy. Um, let's say that we begin to flood. So what do we do? We begin to cut our arms. Ah, that's a very strong sensation. Now that I'm hurting a lot, there's some really strong physical sensations going on. Boom, a wall gets erected because I'm so focused on the present moment and the pain in my arm that I can no longer even perceive this flooding coming through because I'm busy cutting myself up, right? Or another example is that we can erect permanent walls. What might this look like? Well, say we get triggered every time we walk past a certain building. We now just never walk past that building ever again. Cool, that building's never going to trigger us. However, there's now like a big chunk of geography that's no longer accessible to us. So our defenses can prevent us from becoming flooded, which is nice. The downside is a lot of these defenses can either hurt us or limit our ability to navigate in life. But also, as long as these defenses are here and in place, if we now consciously wanted to go over into our trauma and begin processing it, well, the same wall is still in place. We can't get to this trauma to process it if our psychological defenses are still in place. So in this way, our defenses keep us safe, but if we're actually ready to go into the trauma to begin processing, 
these defenses will stop that from happening. So often the frightening part of trauma therapy is to actually drop these defenses, which feels scary for a lot of people because for many people it's what's kept them feeling safe for a really long time. And perhaps these defenses first came up to literally keep them safe at the time of the trauma to keep them alive. But often to reach present day healing we have to recognize that these defenses are no longer needed. They serve their purpose well and that's great. But as a part of the trauma healing process they probably need to go. Again I reiterate this point really often but like don't do this by yourself as an untrained person. If you want to move past your past that's awesome but go and see an actual trauma-informed clinician and put in the work together with someone who can help guide you through the minefield that is trauma work. Let's connect it all. A normal memory we can just remember and think about it and think about what we felt and thought and so on, but we don't actually feel as if we're back in that moment reliving it. A traumatic memory has never been properly processed and all the information doesn't get stored as a proper memory, but instead it gets saved as is in a state-specific form meaning that when we recall it, we actually relive it. Flooding occurs when all the components of a traumatic memory flood our awareness, such as the traumatic images and emotions and sounds and so on. When this totally overwhelms a person, it can lead to re-traumatization, leaving the person freshly traumatized and stressed. In therapy, when dealing with traumatic memories, a person should be prepped by their therapist and trained in skills to keep them present, to prevent overwhelm, and then these traumatic memories in therapy will be transformed into a normal, non-intense, non-overwhelming memory. And then after this, hopefully the end goal is that all of the negative side effects of this unprocessed memory also go away. The flashbacks, the nightmares, the perhaps unhealthy psychological defenses such as substance use or self-harm or avoidance behaviors. Once that original traumatic memory is processed, all of those negative after side effects will also go away. And remember, you want to navigate this carefully and find someone who actually knows what they're doing to help guide you along this journey. It's still your journey to take, but don't do it solo. Uh, if you found the video helpful, consider sharing it with someone who might benefit. And if you have any questions or want a specific topic covered, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.